Well, we got to figure out different. We got to be asking different things of them, and that's that's a little harder. I'll give you two different scenarios of like when, you know I was just saying, oh yeah, we find whatever we want at our fingertips. I'll give you two different scenarios I have, and we can look at. There's a pretty obvious difference between the two. So I had to build a fence in my house. I took a I took a week off of work to build a fence. And I'm like, you know, I know how to use tools. And, you know, I can fix something if I have. But I'm not a carpenter. So this is a very new thing to me. I don't know what the process is. I don't know what the first thing you do is. I went and talked to a couple friends. They told me how they, they did it. Looked up a lot of stuff online. Looked at some books. Got the basic. Okay, so I got to do this. These are the things I absolutely got to get right. Okay, cool. Um, so I dug my, my fence poles and had them all laid out. and did, you know, I did my lines and everything, right? And after he ended, I dug the holes by hand because it was just the way it was done. So that was like a good hour day's work. And I go the next day to sink my posts, and my fence posts are full of water. Hmm. Something tells me that's not good. And my ground, my, my ground was so low that digging the holes basically the water, and it hadn't rained, like the water came up from the Something tells me this has to change my strategy. So I go to Google, try and figure out, well, what do people do when they sink fence posts in deltas and swamps and things like that? And I couldn't get over how much, how many people were prepared to tell me what to do, uh, with incredible self-assurance and authority. I've been doing this for 15 years, and whatever you do, don't sit, put concrete in those. But I've been doing this for 15 years, and whatever you do, you gotta put concrete in. Those, right? It was just like, it was insane, and I had no ability whatsoever to discern between these authoritative results. In my day-to-day -day life, I have problems like, okay, um, I need to find a resource on such and such a topic related to promoting Creative Commons with that. Has anyone done a Creative Commons workshop with their faculty? I throw it onto Twitter, I'm going to get 10 of them back. I'm going to know those people over time. I'll have seen those people's twits over months. I can completely and instantaneously tell who of these people I know and trust. Um, and then. Within that context, I can see when I get pointed out to the blog and looking at the domain, I can kind of just intuitively see what's going to work and what's right. So, I mean, in the same case, it was like sets of online resources, and the quality of the intrinsic quality of those resources is probably pretty comparable. But same thing with the cooking recipes. It's incredible now. I mean, you know, I want to learn to cook something. I just go Google it, and then, it, then you see you see this incredible disparity of recipes. How do you determine those? Um, so I guess how would we do, so the equivalent, I guess, of my broader question is, there's a skill set there. Within my domain of education technology, open learning, using open source tools for learning, I've developed a social network, a personal learning network, that allows me to assess and creatively reuse existing materials and, you know, and, and, and feel pretty confident in how I apply them. When I step out of that domain, I don't have that. I don't know. I think that's a question we could take on. How do we, you know, when we send our students into some new domain, to be able to develop some sort of meaningful, and I suspect there'll be a social component to it, making connections to real people somewhere. And that's why I'm a big believer in openness, one the pedagogical reason. The first time, the reason, the thing that gets people hooked on web logging is the first time you write something and somebody you never met and never heard of either links to you or comments on your piece. I mean, it's an incredibly powerful thing. Every year when I get my students blogging, there's always this moment where if you have them writing about a contemporary figure and the student writes a review and that's something of this piece of garbage, and then you know the comment dutifully comes from an author who clearly has a Google alert on their name. As the author of this piece of garbage, allow me to <laughs> say in my defense, da 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 da. It's, whoa, what just happened here? Oh, you mean I'm not just simulating, pretending to be a thinker and a communicator in a room, in a bubble, before I go out into the real world and actually start thinking and communicating? For, you mean I'm thinking and communicating now? You mean I'm accountable for what I say now? You mean what I have to say has value now? So, I, I hate to be overly simplistic, but I really think openness is a really big key. 
Because when you, when you have people creating real resources on the open web that real people can see, you're telling them that their work has value. This isn't a simulation of work we're doing. We're doing some work. I will give an example. I've been showing it in talks for two years. If anyone's seen my talks in the last two years, I'm sorry, because I've seen this example. But um, the best project I've been involved with is where instead, you know, the professor hated Wikipedia and told his students not to use it. Uh, instead said, okay, it's true. Wikipedia sucks in our area of Latin American literary studies. So we're going to create really good Wikipedia art. And, and we're going to do it with that community. And you know, people have this idea, you know, Wikipedia, anything goes, because anybody can edit anything. Go in there sometime and make some changes. Um, and I'm not saying just making vandalism. You'll find that even if you go in there and try, people are going to call you on your stuff and say, where is your documentation on that? You're, you're stating an opinion there. You're not stating a fact. It's like, their standards are incredible. It's actually, the hardest thing about working in Wikipedia is not being intimidated by how tough people are. So actually, I wouldn't necessarily recommend new teachers going and sending their students to Wikipedia for that reason. I did that with a graduate class in Mallory two years ago. Yeah. And there was virtually nothing on the Mort Arthur. And they constructed this enormous page on, on the Mort Arthur. And it got torn to pieces. Yeah. I mean, it was a lot of conflict and controversy and that kind of thing. But they felt like they'd done something. They'd contributed yeah. something. It wasn't like submitting a journal article that would take three years to get a referee, maybe. Right. And, so that's awesome. Really cool. If I give you my email address, would you send me it? Yeah. That, that'd be good. Um, the, uh, so yeah, so you have things like that. So we, you know, there's, you know, so, so there's but the thing I would just say is, think, are there ways you can say to the students, you're not just going to sit here and pretend to build something. You're going to build something. Um, it doesn't have to be a Wikipedia page, but be something, you know, people are out looking for information on something. You're providing a service there. Um, so I think that's one possibility. Brian, you know, I'll just throw in a comment. Uh, you're talking about the openness, and you also talked about your personal learning network, and you mentioned a few of the people that would be in that. And that one of the beautiful things about, I mean, when when you're either getting uh, giving or giving advice or links or hints or whatever to, you know, you mentioned Darcy and Alan, and then there's Scott and Chris and Jared and all those guys, you're doing it in the open. So people like me get to follow along. And so while you guys are learning from one another, I'm learning from all of you at the same time. And if you did that in, you know, private email or in some other closed environment, the six of you or however many, you know, that you're communicating with right then, sure, you're all learning, but right now you're, you've got hundreds or probably thousands of people who are learning something at the same time. And you get to eavesdrop on all sorts of people too. So I, you know, I get that, I get to see what Clay Shirky and William Gibson say to each other, you know, um, which is pretty cool. And, it's, and that's kind of a way, too, to, you know, to eavesdrop when you're coming into a new domain, you know, to, you know, the, one of my pet peeves with online learning people is uh, using the word lurking as a pejorative thing. And lurking's a great thing to do. You come in quietly, just get a sense of the thing, see how people interact, get a sense of the language, get a sense of the rules of the place before you barge in. I don't know, to me, that, you know, I mean, hopefully you go beyond that, but maybe you don't. Um, I, I think, you know, it's, it's, why don't we call that observation? <laughs> um, but, um, and so that's one of the issues people sometimes have with not only going into Wikipedia, but other existing online communities. You send your students in there without any orientation on it, their work might get torn to shreds, or they might be really insensitive to that, to that existing community. And a lot of times, I hate to say it, but academics go in, well, we're the ones with this authority. We're, you should be thrilled we're coming in here. And, 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 you know, bestowing our wisdom on your little community.